This is a headgum podcast. Standing in line to see the show tonight, and there's a light on, heavy glow. By the way, I tried to say I'd be there waiting for Danny. The girl is singing songs to me beneath the marquee. Overload. By the way, I tried to say I'd be there waiting for. Wow, that was my incredible rendition of By the Way by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh my God. I should honestly record that whole track like that. I think that that would be very successful. Uh, the year is 2005. And I am so happy we're in the year 2005. Back in the year 2005, we were only in the year 2005 once before, so it's huge to be back here again. And to just get everyone excited and feeling nostalgic for what was going on in the world, I'm just going to list some rapid fire pop culture moments of 2005 According to MrPopCulture.com, you know we always have to cite our sources here on Senior Superlatives. So for starters, the number one movie was Mr. and Mrs. Smith, followed by Madagascar, followed by Batman Begins, followed by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, followed by Wedding Crashers. The number one song was We Belong Together by Mariah Carey, then Holla Back Girl by Gwen Stefani, then O oh, by Sierra, featuring, of course, Ludacris, Candy Shop by 50 Cent, and Don't Funk With My Heart by the Black Eyed Peas. I gotta say, big year for music, because yes. all of those are huge. Oh, and the honorable mention, because of my guest, Incomplete by the Backstreet Boys, also was charting that year. Destiny's Child, sad, 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 announced in 2005 that they were splitting up, that they were going to be no more, which seems crazy because I feel like they made music after 2005, but hmm, maybe that was just Beyonce. Any whomst. Um, Hung Up by Madonna came out, loved. Guitar Hero came out in 2005, huge. Um, some controversies that we can talk about, you know, why not talk about uh, the fact that that was when Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston divorced. Russell Crowe famously threw a phone at a hotel employee, anger management issues, I remember that scandal. Um, Tom Cruise, famously on Oprah Winfrey's show, confessed his love for Katie Holmes, spoke openly about Scientology. God, Jude Law cheated on Sienna Miller with the nanny. Remember that? And, you know, where were we when, when Tom Cruise was on Oprah? Where were we when we found out that Destiny's Child was splitting up? Where were we when Brad and Jen got a divorce? We were in Skokie, Illinois. And who were we? We were Lisa Traeger. Lisa, Yay. thank you for coming on Senior Superlatives. Whew, jam packed. Can you believe? I mean, 2005, like well, so much stuff. For this podcast, I um, actually spritzed some juicy couture <gasps> perfume on today. Thank you. Was it Viva La Glam? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I bought a little one at TJ Maxx, I and it's really that. been making me feel awesome. I love that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, nothing like scent to bring you right back to the time and place. Yeah. High was school, that your high school oh, fragrance? Um, yeah, Juicy was big, and the Lacoste, Touch mm, of Pink, meant a lot to me, and Abercrombie 8. Love Abercrombie so, 8. Um, that's where I was living. But Juicy, of course, because I couldn't afford... I wasn't getting the terry cloth outfits. That sure. wasn't. I had the knockoffs, but perfume is such an easy way to get luxury when you can't afford Absolutely. the major luxury. I mean, it is kind of the main revenue point for a lot of huge luxury brands. Oh, really? Yeah, like Chanel. I mean, they make of all of their br their bread and butter is fragrance and makeup. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, so um, that was a fun way. And then, you know, my family loved the free gifts. Oh, of course. We love a free gift. So we chased the free gifts for our perfumes. <laughs> Lisa, you know, up top, we're already doing it, but I just got to know, what was going on with you in high school? What were you like? What were you wearing? What was the vibe? What was the outfit? Was it clicky? Tell me everything. Um, I was on the swim team. So Huge. And freshman year, I did other sports as well, but it was swim team all the time. So I was mostly sopping wet. 
Adidas slides, <laughs> socks, pajamas. I had swim practice at 5.30 every morning. Oh, my God. You swam before and after school. I never saw the sun sometimes. Like, once what? October hit, you just don't see the sun. Because you're in the water bef- before the sun comes out, and you leave practice after 5 p.m. Wait, I knew you were swimmer girl, but, like, I forgot. Yeah. And so I was pajama. I was late to homeroom. I got so many Saturday detentions because, like, I just couldn't. I just couldn't get to homeroom. Like, what do you guys no. want from me? I actually um, am trying to – I want to rekindle and meet my high school coach again because Whoa. I quit um, senior year two weeks before senior meet because my family – we got tickets to Oprah. Okay. My, huge. Huge. And it was the Shall We Dance, so we got a box lunch. We went to the movies. We got snacks. And then it was J-Lo, Susan Sarandon, Richard Gere. How are you not going to go to that? So I was like, I don't make, I'll try. And so the next day he goes, I thought you were going to try to make it back to practice. I go, I know. The show wasn't over. You want me to take a private jet from downtown? No. And he goes, you know what? Me and everyone else are sick of your attitude. And <gasps> I went, I'm sick of you. And then I just quit. And I was like, I cannot believe I'm quitting right before senior meet. Like, years and What's years. What's senior meet? Senior meet, like, everyone gives you presents and songs. And everyone, like, all the youth, like, all the underclassmen yes. plan, like, a huge goodbye on your last meet for you. And you walk the huddle and you get flowers. And I was like, I cannot believe I've been swimming for years, nonstop, all year round, all summer long. And then my attitude just was like, fuck you. Oh, my God. You know I don't miss practice. All these bitches are missing practice all the goddamn time. I'm always in the pool. And I miss to go to Oprah. Yeah. It's not like you're, like, fucking around at the mall. Yeah, Jason. You're seeing Oprah. So, I, you know, I was – I quit um, aggressively. But he also, like – he just didn't care that we were girls. Like, he was like, you should be able to get ready for school in 15 minutes. And it's what? like I, I can't. So, yeah, I, it's like I was just like wet and disheveled at all times. And then um, and then I became a stoner. Once mm. my swim team career kind of slowed, I was stoner chic. Again, I couldn't afford the North Face out of Columbia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I was always just a little off brand. Yeah. But off brand is chic. Some t- yeah, I I learned I did I I'm wearing my Tiffany's. There we go. We I love. did get that, um, and I had some Birkenstocks, but so I, I, a lot of Express. I would yes. say a lot of Express denim boot yes. cut. Uh, I love jeans. an Express denim boot cut. Did you have a flirty top? Oh yeah, I wore a lot of cami tops. Mm. Um, BB. Not BB. Oh Express. It was Express mostly. I love that. Yeah. Limited. It was too old for me. Yeah, That's limited like is old. Dress pants. Express bank is hot still. It was hot. I feel like when we were in high school. Yeah, it was sexy, and you can wear it to work um, at your receptionist job, yep. and then you can go out at night. You in absolutely your lingerie can. Top. So that's where <laughs> I lived. And Victoria's Secret, like padded bra. Yes, <laughs> like so much fucking like padded. a push up. Yeah, well, because one of my big memories is for theater class, we had to do. Um, a show-off show where you did a, mono, a, a funny monologue, a dramatic monologue, and you sang a song. But I am tone deaf, but they didn't know that yet. So I, <laughs> I was, like, working on it. I did She's Shy from Once Upon a Mattress. And That's I worked sweet. So hard. I couldn't hit the notes. So then they go, they just told me I had to speak in rhythm. So I had Wait, to. what? I had to, well, because they're like, okay, you can hit these notes. Like, we picked the song for okay. you. Okay. And I couldn't. And then they're like, okay. It, it might be funny, actually, if you don't hit the notes, but you got to just hit these moments. Right. And I was just so bad. They go, we're going to speak in rhythm for this piece. <laughs> do you remember it? Oh, I do, because I was wearing my, like, clementine peachy, long lingerie top, express jeans, these black, like, heeled shoes, at, like, my t- padded bra, and my Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker season five uh, haircut. <laughs> And I spoke in rhythm, and then I would go to the community center to work out in the elliptical, and our high school had a channel, and I would, like, watch – I could watch myself. Your high school had a channel? Yeah, like, the local news. So, like, I remember I was on the elliptical, and I was like, I can't believe it. And I would just watch myself in this lingerie top. Wait, that is so funny. Yeah, it was great. I'm also shocked that you would hit the gym, that you would go to the elliptical. Yeah, I've always just wanted to be thin, and it's never happened. I don't know why – yeah. I don't know, but I I go through phases. I'm like hardcore for a year or two, then I don't, I'm like I can't do this anymore. Huh? Then. Feeling pressure to be thin <laughs> as a teen yeah. girl? Oh, you know that reminds me. You know what was big for me? <laughs> Softy shorts. Oh, huge. How many rolls did you do? Uh, pro- just one, I think. Okay. Because I liked the white part. Yeah. I liked that. My mom refused to buy me them. 
Your mom was, my, cl- was classy. She was classy. <laughs> There's no way. My mom was like, no. My mom was like, you need to wear pants and shorts that have zippers and buttons. Yeah. She was like, you're not doing elastic. You're not doing sweatpants. And all that I wanted was Sophie shorts. Because they were hot. They, they were, were like hot. sexy. With a white little spaghetti oh my tank top. Oh, my God. Wait, nothing. did you shop at Nordstrom BP? Nordstrom BP. Oh, yeah, Brass, Brass Plum. Plum. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They had the best tank tops. Oh, my God. I forgot about Brass Plum. Yeah. They had great tank tops. I was a really big Urban Outfitters shopper because we had one close to my house. And I got really into, and I've spoken about this before on this podcast, and no one seems to remember them but me. Sparkle brand. Do you remember that brand? No. Okay. Then we go. There we go. No one else knows no. the brand. It was like Urban Outfitters in-house version of what like a CNC California tank would have been or like a layering like Michael Starr's tank you Michael know Michael Starr was yeah. that was a sex that was a Huge. high end item for people very high end you still could, is yeah they're still kicking they resurrected and my sister was like my sister bought two and then she put them on and we were both just like no. <laughs> you almost have to be like pre bat mitzvah to pull it off. Yeah, it's really wild. Like, you know, I couldn't have every, but I really, my I, my poor parents, they, I really they gave... forced them to extend their budget for these. I was, because I did get a coach bag. Huge. I really wanted a coach what bag. What did she look like? like? What, what color? It was the t- smallest one with the buckle, beige with the logo. A classic. Yeah. Just, um, you know, I she took me to the Nordstrom. Like, she really did the things for me, and I appreciate it. That it's... I needed to feel belonging in some way. Were you popular in school? Was your school clicky, or was it weird? I mean, I, it's crazy to me that you were, like, big athlete. Well, I also did theater, but I was never good. <laughs> I was not good, but I worked hard. Yeah. That's kind of always my um, claim to fame, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah, I was in activities. I did theater every semester, and then I was in a couple shows. Do you know who I went to high school with? Who? And junior high and elementary school is little Esther, Esther Pavitsky. Wow. We were in Godspell together. Wow. Yeah. Were you guys friends in high school? Um, No, I was jealous of her because she had lavender Uggs, and she made out with the cutest boy in theater backstage during Godspell, so I was just like, fuck this bitch. Absolutely. Yeah, I hated her. That's so. how I would have felt, too. <laughs> I wish that the things that made me jealous now were as simple as, like, lavender Uggs. Yeah. And now that we've been in therapy for so long, I'm like, well, I know that this has a lot to do with the fact that I didn't get love from my father or, like, whatever it is. And I'm like, no, let's just make jealousy simple. She made out with the hot boy and she has cool Uggs. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Uggs were huge and I was not in the Ugg community. Were you in the Fug community? No. You were not that, in the that crossed boot. the line for me. Yeah, I did not want a fake hug. Because you were also watching Sex in the City. I don't know when I started watching it. To be honest, I really don't know at what point it got into my head. Because now it's just been like such a staple, always. Yeah, like I, I can't even remember. It, it's been in the fabric of your life since before you. Could what even... is? Time? I had a Dawson's Creek bucket hat, but that might have been junior high. Well, Dawson's Creek is also a classic that yeah. I re- that I got back into during pandemic, and I forgot how good it was. Was it good? It stood the test of time. I'm just like such a pacey girl that it was nice to see him again. I'm as, proud of him as as a young chap. Yeah, I mean, I love Joshua Jackson, and you know, his wife had a crush on him when she was like younger, and that is true romance. I love that. I love when people are like, "I just married my." Crush. I know it's insane. I like it. Who was your high school crush? Um, Nick Carter. Nick Carter all the way. Anthony Kiedis. Um, and Leonardo DiCaprio probably residual from Titanic, but I can't be sure. But absolutely, just like blonde bowl cut. Did you so have a relationship in high school? Never. No, I was. No one liked me, and I tried. I would like ask people out. I gave people numbers. Like no one liked me. Really? I asked a boy to homecoming. He said no, and then came with my group anyways as a single person. What? So we were both single in the friend group, but he refused to go with me. That is so fucked. Yeah. P- yeah. I. I was. No. It's. It's. That's the big thing in therapy is like unlearning all of these things that you thought about yourself when you were young, but it's truly detrimental to my being still to this day of like no one wanting to fuck me when I was younger and wanting to fuck. 
Yes. Because as a girl, you're taught like, oh yeah, guys just want to fuck. And then when you're not, no one wants to fuck you, you're like, oh, well, something's clearly wrong with me. Yeah. Because of the messaging. Yeah. (laughs) Because the messaging is like, guys will stick their dick in anything. Guys will fuck a pie. Guys will fuck whatever. Yeah. Like, and then to be rejected is awful. Yes. I truly believe that these uh, things that we go through in high school is like we are like little balls of putty and it like really is so formative onto who we become. Yeah, it's weird. It's like one dickhead who, you know, had a bad upbringing. One thing that he could have said is like, that's it. That's like your whole insecurity for the rest of your life. And it's like, you know, these I'm sure these kids don't remember or think that they have all this power. Right. But it is wild. Just um, the impact. Yes. Wow. So were you a virgin all through high school? Well, so then there's this one boy and we hung out and then this is on the nose and I've said this before to um, (laughs) on, but I gave my first blow job during the movie Blow. (laughs) So I went to his house, we made out, it was like my first kid and then um, I went, you know, I was going to suck his, and then his sister walked in on us. (gasps) So it was not to completion. And then senior year of high school, my fr- my closest friends were a year older than me, and they were already at University of Illinois Champaign Urbana, mm-hmm. U-, U of I, and I went down there to lose my virginity. They and? didn't know that, but I was like, and I lost my virginity. I got lost. I lost my flip flops. I bled everywhere. They all thought I was kidnapped. They were like planning calling my mother, being like, "We lost her." I lost my flip phone. I was like, "Gone." Well, how for did hours. you lose? What happened? I was just wasting. I saw a guy, and I was like, "I'm gonna." This is it. and Mm. But then my friends were very protective. So they were like banging on the door and they yelled at him. And then I saw him again at the party and I go, hey. And he goes, get away from like your friends are nuts. I go, well, let's just leave. So we left and then we like fucked outside. And then he went, are you a virgin? And I said, no. And he goes, I mean, you are. And I was just like bleeding everywhere. Oh, my God. And my jeans were bloody. And then the like. I walked in and my friends were so up, like, relieved, but then immediately like, you fucking piece of shit. Why'd you do that? And I bought everyone pokey sticks. I don't know if that was a part of your. <laughs> <laughs> what are pokey sticks? It was a place called Gumby's Pizza. It's like a very college campus place. And it's it's like a circle pizza, but there's no sauce. It's like gar- It's like garlic bread pieces in a pizza shape that you dip in shit. That sounds delish. Yeah, and so I was like, I have $70, I'll buy everyone everything. But then my bloody pants, we washed them and put them on the radiator to dry, and then the whole floor smelled like period blood. Like, the, like everyone in the dorms were coming out being like, what is that? And so then my friends had to pop popcorn. So that those are my two sexual experiences. Oh, that was it. my Until God. College. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I wish, like, sometimes, um, like, I was wa- I watched Laguna Beach during the pandemic. Sure. And obviously they're, like, different because they're close to Cabo and they're very wealthy. But, like, I was so inspired by the youth going to sushi dinners yeah. and dating casually. And I'm like, I wish I learned that confidence and, like, the casualness of dating during those years. Like, But if you look back, like if you look at Laguna Beach, because I was re-watching some episodes also during pandemic, and I was like, these guys are fully abusive. Ooh, okay. Like, Steven in that episode when they're all in Cabo is oh, a yeah. you emotional, dirty yeah, yeah, I'm like, whoa. And but I, Kristen's a feminist hero. She was like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm a slut. No, she's like, I'm having fun. Like, literally, like, <laughs> fuck you, fuck off. Yeah. And, like, she is a hero. But when I was watching the behavior of these right. boys and, like, how they spoke, I was like, whoa, this sucks for all of you that this but still exists. Do you remember the blonde one who only lasted one season and he was socially conscious? Like he, Yes, the skateboarder. You know he, like, still, like, works at Vera Wang or something. Yes. Like he something, is in fashion yes, still in New York, yes. which I liked to see. Yes. No, it's – I don't know. I do feel like – we were at like the simmering peak of true toxic masculinity in high school when like saying, calling people like gay or calling people the F word, calling women whores and sluts, like it became so normal in culture. It was like so in all of the pop music we were listening to. It was fully in all of the media we were intaking. Yeah. Like I just feel like this – and low rise jeans, the outfits, oh, the belly the outfits. shirts, like the belly, like the out, the wardrobe was like pretty slutty. Abercrombie, insane. I mean, yeah. when you look at like our like pop girls, like Britney and Christina, it's like 
wear as little clothing as humanly possible, weigh 90 pounds. Tan. Be so fucking tan and like be a whore. And yeah. I still aspire to be such is yes. the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Like loving Britney at a young age fucks me up because when my hair looks like kind of ratty, I'm like, I love it. No, me like, too. When it looks like bad extensions, I'm like, okay, but I like this. Yes. Like I, every time I go and sit and get my hair done to my hair guy, I'm always like, but what if we just had a chunky highlight? <laughs> <laughs> my God. Like, yeah, I remember my friend got highlights for her birthday, and it was like per foil you paid. And it yes. was like she just had these big, fo- oh, my God. Yeah, bad. Bad. Chunky highlight, like dark that dark red, yep. burgundy-ish yes. with the chunky white, like I the Kelly Clarkson. so badly, I so badly wanted to be, there was this store in D.C. called LVLX. Did you have that? No. Um, some people would say LVLX, other people would say level 10. It depended on okay. who you thought. Did you have LVLX? No, it just sounds Okay. Stupid. They had, <laughs> I'm not kidding you, they had jeans, not, no exaggeration, the zipper was one inch. Okay? The zipper, they were so low rise that the zipper was literally this big. And this hot, hot, hot clique of girls that I was like friends with would wear them and they would wear matching ones with tiny they would get little boys like Hanes um white like undershirts they would wear those and then they'd have pacifiers that they'd wear around their neck oh my god and they'd wear like like air force ones or something that was like the look stick straight hair obviously like flat ironed to their face i had a friend who flat ironed with an iron oh absolutely And you and and the glossiest, glossiest lip gloss ever. Juicy tubes. And juicy tubes. And just so much eyeliner. And I remember looking at those girls being like, I would do anything to look like that. So you were friends with them, but like uh, oh, like at the bottom or something? Or I was you friends were, with them, groups? but like I, I was a floater. Those girls went to a different school than me, and they like it was very like thirteen vibes okay. with them. You know, because I'm thinking I'm like that doesn't sound preppy and clubby. No, are they, they were very. With an Air Force? It, they were it is bad a girls. Lot of different things. They yeah. were bad okay. girls. They were girls like stealing liquor and like make and like making out with each other all the well, time. Even and you like, just having friends from another high school, like to me. I thought that was cool. Like, I didn't really have a social circle outside of my school. Was your high school big? Yeah. Well, yeah, you had a television station. (laughs) (laughs) When did you get your first tattoo? 16. Me too. At a man's apartment, yeah. Wait, at a man's apartment? Yeah. Go on. Me, um, this girl, Julia and Barbara. And Barbara was like... um, she had orthodox parents, but she was bad to the bone. She had like, <laughs> was she orthodox? No, she had like a dog collar vibe. Um, just like so, me and my friend got little flowers above our pussy. Love and Barbara got like a naked woman surrounding a gun on her ankle. Wait, like she, what? Like, yeah, like she just already had a ton. She didn't give a fuck. Like, we we were in Hebrew class together, but me, uh, the three of us went. How did you find this man? No idea. Julia was just like, oh, I'm going with Barbara to do this. And I went, well, I, I've, oh, I've always wanted to be tattooed. Yeah. Tattooed, tatted. Like, I would go to Barnes & Noble and go through all the tattoo magazines. It's just kind of in the vision of myself. Yes. And... Um, so I was like down, I was down immediately. And was it like creepy? Were you scared? I mean, looking back, I mean, cause his girlfriend came home or his wife, like while he was just tattooing underage pussies, like I, she was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> she was very upset. Did you, With our and- jeans roll down? Like, yeah, it's, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. It's illegal. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> it illegal. It's fully illegal. But Julia was cool and her parents liked smoking weed and so we would like smoke weed and stuff and that was really fun. When did you first smoke weed? I would say junior year. Yeah. Yeah. And you immediately were like, oh, I like pot. Yeah, I liked the people I hung out with while doing it and I, yeah, I enjoyed. Okay, so you're going to like this. I can't wait. Our high school is across the street from Old Orchard Mall. Okay. Which is... One of the most beautiful outdoor malls. I mean, times have changed. Obviously, malls are different now. But just a fountains, gorgeous mall. And we were across the street. So 
Uh, well, the cool girls <laughs> would go to Ruby Tuesdays for lunch to the salad bar. Really? Not, yeah. But um, <laughs> I love that school, the cool girls would go to Ruby Tuesdays and have the salad bar. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. And they're Sebring convertibles. Yeah. Sebring convertibles. Yeah, Lisa was like the, the. It also like the idea of popular. Like I'm thinking at the popular group, and there were so many subgroups within the popular. Group. Yes, there was like the bad girl contingent. There was like a little slutty, and then the this she was Lisa was like the most pretty, but so nice. And then there was like the nice crew. Yeah, and they're all still friends, I think. But yeah, there was all these within the popular crew. Yeah, they like kind of like crews. branched out. But what I would do is all you needed was $5. And then all the stoners would go to the parking lot of the mall. And you would find three people. And then you would buy 20, you know, a gram of weed. You'd yeah. go to someone's house. Someone would roll a blunt. And then we would smoke. That's really nice. And that's what we would do for a while. Kind of communal vibes. Communal vibes. I like and that. I had fun with those. That group. My parents were very upset. But... Did they catch you smoking oh, pot? Oh, the first day, but I didn't want them to know. So I lied and said I'd been doing it forever. Because I like... <laughs> How did they catch you? I that's the, that's the opposite lie that you should say. I just didn't want them to feel good that they caught me right away. Oh, you wanted to be like, no, you fuckers, you're not slick. Yeah, they, How did they catch you? They found the, my bowl, like, and it was like a metal bowl made up of like nuts and bolts. So I'm sure they thought it was like crack or something. Sure, worse. something but, scary. Yeah, and then because my dad showed up to Godspell rehearsals to make sure I was there after they found the bowl, and I was, and I was like, what's going on? And the then, Godspell rehearsal with Lil Esther. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was also in a Kabuki play. What? The monstrous spider. Wow. And we had like full kabuki makeup, outfit, everything. We had to clean the, the stage. We did full Japanese kabuki ceremonial shit too. Oh my God. Your theater program sounds intense. Oh, it won honors. They brought Hamlet to the Fringe Festival. Oh my God. While I was in high school. We did like eight shows a year. Holy shit. And we had a full um, state, like scene shop. Like I built Was sets. it so we had a competitive? Shop. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you know, I did the curtains for the king and I. Like, yeah, I was hard. You had to be good. There were talented people. Yeah. There were definitely talented people. Well, did anyone go on to be outside of you and little Esther go um, on to be, like, successful in the field? I think people – there's – oh, Clara Wong. Oh. Do you know – Clara Wong, she was – she's incredible. She was in Billions and she's in commercials and Amazing. acting. And she was a model, yeah. Um, and she was also, like, an AP person, but now she's just, like, a fucking hot actress in New York. So were you a good student? No. I didn't care. Yeah. Same. I didn't care. Same. I, like, the bubble tests, I would just fill them in and go, I don't care. Really? Get this out of my face. You wouldn't even, like, give one fucking no, shit? No, except I wanted to be, so, like, I I wanted to be an AP English, though, and yeah. everyone was like, can you, you, sh you can't. And yeah. I go, I'm doing AP English, because I wanted to be with the best teacher that my friends liked, and I got a C and a D. Like, I was not smart Fuck. enough to be in that class, but I just, I, if I, I wanted to be... In it. An intellectual writer and reader, you know? But, yeah, I do know. Yeah. But Damn. I was so dumb that, like, one time we got assigned, the first time we got assigned reading, instead of reading the pages that were assigned, I read the years of life to death of the author. <laughs> I didn't catch it. So I was just, like, in the middle of a these pages being like, what is this? <laughs> and then showed up, and we just had to read pages, like, 1 through 25. <laughs> I, up all night with my Norton anthology. Oh, my God. Yeah. I remember getting, like, reading assignments, and the reading was, like, 30 pages. And I remember being like, how the fuck am I going to read 30 pages? Like, it felt so cumbersome and, like, exhausting. Well, and it was, though, because that was for one class. Now yes. add four or five more classes. Yes. And then did you have after-school activities? Yes. I mean, did I have after getting high? <laughs> getting high and sucking people off. You were, not, you were a slutty girl. Oh, my God, Lisa. Oh, my God. I'm so jealous and excited. So you were slutty. I was slutty. I was slutty for sure. Dates, yeah. hookups, parties next to your friends? A hundred percent did the next to the friends thing for sure. Um, I was like a boyfriend girl. So I had a boyfriend my junior year and a boyfriend my senior year. There were two different boyfriends, but like I was with two people. And then my sophomore year, I was 
obsessed with and like dated for like a week. Probably the hottest person I've ever dated in my life to this day. Um, Where is this person now? I think they're living in Virginia. They did not go to my school. We went to different schools. They are still so fucking gorgeous. I will show you a picture of them when we are done recording this podcast. They could play, play, play the guitar. Wow. Like, holy shit. Yeah. But so where did he you was meet like, everyone? Were these at dances? Like, how did you meet everyone? At the roller rink? At the mall? I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really know how we met everyone. DC is so small like, it's such a small, when you're in D.C. proper, all of the schools are so close to each other that, like, and a lot of people went to different middle schools. So it was a lot of, like, people going to different middle schools and then going to different high schools and then, like, the cross-pollination of those pockets of people. Yeah. Like, my best friend Kenzie, who's still my best friend to this day, we went to different high schools. And the way that we met each other was because we – both got extended time to do the PSATs, which is what you'd have to take to get into secondary school, like a different high school. And we were both in like the ADD like section of this test that we had to go to a different place. And that's how I met her. Like, no way. Yeah, like random shit like that. She had a bag of Cheetos and a big thing of water and I had a granola bar and she offered me Cheetos and then I invited her to my 14th birthday party. Damn, that is so exciting. Yeah, and then it was kind of just like meeting a bunch of people like that. And then there would be like dances in D.C. We'd have like go-go's, like D.C. has like go-go music. And there would be like schools that would host these go-go's. Iconically Sidwell Friends, where like all of the president's daughters go to school. And by daughters, I mean children. <laughs> have they all been daughters? Pretty much. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of thrilling. And then the other, the 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 son, the most recent son, uh, oh. was not allowed to attend said school. I really? stayed stayed at school in New York, I think. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I was like, I thought the I thought Hunter's a grown man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was no. weird. But I was yeah I was a sl- I was a I was a scandalous girl. But and having- were you close with your sister? Did you overlap in high school at all? No, we did not overlap at all in high school. Okay, we went to completely different high schools. We had completely different experiences. She went to an all girls boarding school in Virginia. I went to like a co ed school in DC. However, she did date her high school boyfriend. Went to my high school, which was random. But yeah, we didn't overlap. I can't. Why'd she go to boarding school? Because my parents were sick of her shit. No, I'm kidding. She went to boarding school to horseback ride, which is like the That's like nice. whitest thing in the world. It's cool though. It teaches kids things. I think. Yeah. She. I mean, she was horse girl, and this school that she went to was horse girl school. Like most of the people that she went to, her friends in high school, they went on to like be serious equestrians and compete at professional levels. My sister could have done that, but she ended up getting mono so severely her senior year of high school that she had to stop. And the mono actually came back this year. Isn't that crazy? It is. Is she okay? She's fine. But if I was like, no, no, she is not. Um, so better. I can't believe it. So you were out there hooking up, smoking weed. Yeah, the the pods suddenly become about me. Yeah. Right, well, I, I do no, like I was that. I was out there hooking up and smoking weed, all to say, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again: high school sex is bad. So you didn't miss out. I mean, you did have sex in high school, and it sounds like losing your virginity was incredibly traumatic. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I think that. Movies do us a disservice by making us think that like high school romance is romantic. I will say the love that I felt in high school will never feel that way again in my life. It was intense. So insanely intense. Intoxicating. Addicting. Insane. And yeah, and you I remember at a party once there was a couple fucking. Yes. And then he came out and <laughs> of the room and then got a like a bowl and put a bunch of ice in it and then went back in there and I was like wow look at them oh well yeah so that was also the time cool. of like Cosmo <laughs> when yeah. you would be like let me give you head with an ice cube in my mouth like no yeah, never doing that I always remember like the hair tie over the dick what or something like put a hair tie on the dick <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like a cock ring? Yeah, something stupid. I don't – I always just – I'm like, what? It? That's, I think, when I stopped reading it. When I see – I don't think grownups read it anymore, right? No, they no can't. One's... They can't. If you, if you are reading Cosmo genuinely for sex advice and you're over the age of 18 – It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah, like in Legally Blonde, even when she's like – it's the Bible. I brought the Bible. Yeah. That was like so out of touch, I felt. Legally Blonde was a big thing. Huge. I remember we rode our bikes to the mall to watch it, and I hit the curb and flew over my handlebars, but I still loved the movie. Were you wearing a helmet? Of course not. My flip-flops flew. <laughs> I feel like you have a lot of flip-flop trauma. <laughs> yeah. And I was rollerblading. All my friends were on bikes, and I usually rollerbladed because I had so many uh, bicycle accidents. Really? Yeah. I was just always having a lot of problems on bicycles. Oh, my God. Into bushes, into cars. Just like I can't. I Bicycles are not for me. Bicycles are not for me either. And I've tried, and I've bought some in my adult life, and it's always just like, why am I pretending I'm someone I'm not? I know. I'm not going to bicycle. I know. And we, we want we want to – it's me and jump roping. I buy a jump rope all the time. And I'm like, I'm going to jump rope. Nope. I do love jump roping. Me too. But no. no. We're not doing it. <laughs> Absolutely not. I feel like I've gotten so many um, crazy little stories that have just been blurted out of your mouth in, <laughs> on this episode. But is there anything that, like, really comes to mind as being, like, the quintessential Lisa Traeger High school memory, high school moment, high school story. Well, I got egged on Halloween. Um, no, you did I, physically? Yeah, I was in my Cinderella outfit. I got egged. P- Who I, egged you? No clue. <gasps> Still to this day? Still to this day, no the investigation stays open. Oh I do my not know. God. I got, yeah, I did not fit in. I've had my personality my whole life. And so. I think it was, like, off-putting at that age. But I loved sleepovers. I was always, like, fun at sleepovers. I'm trying to think of, like, a quintessential um, moment. I would, um... I can't... I still cannot believe you got egged. Yeah, also, like, the the these, like, guys I wanted that... Like, they were, like, the skater cool. Like, not cool cool, mm. but, like, alternative cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just not that nice to me. And then they suddenly were being nice and wanted to sign my yearbook. And then it's because they drew all over my face and drew dicks everywhere and just, like, did all these awful things. And I was like, my mom wants this yearbook. Go fuck yourselves. And I told on them. And they had to buy me a new yearbook. And then they were all pissed at me. And it's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. You drew you drew dicks? Like, what? Do you, this is what my mom lives for. She needs the yearbook. You can't draw a dick on me. I don't know. What is wrong with people? I have no idea. I was think quintessential though is like me and my best friend Lindsay screaming, fighting at um on the pool deck of the swim team. What happened? I guess I said something to her boyfriend's sister that was fucked up, but I don't even remember what it was, and she was just like pissed that I had said that. But and so we were fighting. And then it was just like a screaming match. A screaming match on the pool deck. Throw down. Throw down. Who won? Um, I don't remember. I really don't. Um, yeah, I have no idea. She's a minister now, so I guess I won. But <laughs> <laughs> was that what ended the friendship? No, not at all. I always say like I'm so anti-religion in every way, but her family actually like lived lived Christ-like. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I actually helped the community in real, tangible ways, and were good people. Yeah. And I can only list like a few kinds of religious people that I've met that are actually like true to it. True to not being assholes, but like to help to community work. Yeah. Um. Yeah. A lot of prank calls I liked. Was that after high school? Everything's kind of a blur. I'm kind of sad I don't have one quintessential. Cool no, there moment. are many. Yeah. There are many. I mean. I, but what sucks is, like, sometimes, again, it's these patterns where I'm, like, haunted by the the dynamics and the stuff. Because I yes. felt like this is what happened, and it's happened to me recently, actually, and it really fucked me up, where we're in a friend group, and all we do is talk shit about one person and how fucking annoying they are and how much we hate them. And then I finally have a confrontation with this person. Yeah. And then I get kind of shoved out, and everyone continues being friends. Mm. And that recently happened too, where I was like, all we do is talk shit about this person. Right. So why are we doing this? Right. And then, yeah. And then the dynamics aren't there. The then cycle. You realize, like, and then so now, yeah. Yeah. Cycles. Like I hate the, I hate repeating shit that I'm like, wow, I've been doing the same 
bad behaviors or like patterns since high school. Right. It bothers me. Well, I think high school, we get into behavioral patterns as like a survival tactic. Yeah. Like, because high school is truly like the fucking wild, wild west Mm -hmm. where you are really like figuring it yourself and how you're working in this microcosm of people and like who's at the top of the food chain and like how are you going to navigate all of these social situations that you're being confronted with for the first time. So I do think all of that shit informs how we act as adults. Yeah, and I I feel like, but I don't know, you seem to be better about the floating situation. Like, it still kind of bothers me. I mean, I like having a group, and I was always, like, parts of groups. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have my own insecurities with stuff like that. Like, I was never fully in the popular girl crew. And I was never fully in, like, the theater person group. I was never fully in any group. So I think that's why, for me, I was so relieved that I had friends outside of my school. But, like, I still feel insecure about that. Especially comedy is very much, to me, structured like high school. Or it feels very much like high school. Like, you have your class of people that you've come up with, that you've known for a long time. And, like, you have your little cliques and your pockets of people. And it's like, I don't know. I I sometimes can feel anxieties that I felt as a teen, like, lurking back into my body now as, you know, a 21-year-old woman. Yeah. So it, it is wild. I'm kind of mad that I don't have a big story. No, I mean, you literally told me you got so a tattoo on your attention. pussy when you were 16 <laughs> by an old man in an apartment. You made a dorm room reek of period because you <laughs> yeah. lost your virginity. You almost you got egged. You didn't even tell me that full story. We just out, you know what else was really fucked up? I had one quote unquote best friend and I ended up she ended up joining like landmark like cults vibes. Yes, yes, and yes, like, yes. We finally split apart. But she was like my ride or die from maybe seventh grade until like 25, 26 ish. Long time. Yeah. And and her boyfriend and that crew, they were so mean to me. Ugh. And she never defended me. And that dynamic of friendship of like needing someone to be above me and I'm below them and they treat me like shit in this weird way had continued in my life. But I look back and I just feel sad for myself that I was like my best friend let her boyfriend and his friends be so mean to me. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I, it was like, fuck you. Yeah. I feel that way. Well, oh, my God. Is that a door knock that I hear? <laughs> Why, yes, it is. We're in the school guidance counselor's office now. Yay. Oh, my God, Lisa, welcome to the high school guidance counselor's office. Wow, that was seamless. That was beautiful. Uh, really I, am, <laughs> I am your high school guidance counselor. May I offer you some apple juice if you have low blood sugar already, from being so emotional? I love apple <laughs> juice, and I actually just thought of a story that you might like. I, I would love to hear it. I do want to be this guidance counselor, Greta. Um, so I think it was junior, I don't know if it was junior or senior year, but we got to do in the theater, um, like a sketch improv show. And I think that's when I realized I can do, like I wrote a bunch of the sketches Mm -hmm. and I was really funny, but then we played improv games and I definitely got on my knees and acted out like a (laughs) blowjob in front of family, friends, you know, well-wishers and, um, afterwards, you know, well-wishers, like the theater (laughs) teacher, you know, we rap after, get notes and he was like. I, you can't do that. Like, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, you can't fake suck a dick. Like, there are parents here. This is high school. And I was like, and I had never even, uh, maybe I sucked one dick by that. But, like, I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> it was just, like, part of the show. And my parents were in the crowd. Like, it was so fucked up. Did people laugh? Yeah, I was killing it. Um, <laughs> I killed it. But he was like, you can't. You can't ever do that again. <laughs> you can't. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I felt, I've had the same sense of humor for a long time. But yeah, that I mean, I so do that, love that. that's I'm glad a story came to mind. No, that, that encapsulated. That's a beautiful story. Everything. So you were like class clowny. But I was also like, I'm very into justice. I was fighting with people all the time, mm. and just like always f- a feminist. Just yeah, I wanted. The American life and to be accepted and yeah. just have people like me for who I was. I remember one day at lunch, they're like, the way you talked to Allison was not cool. And we're not going to be your friend anymore. And I was like, I'm like funny. <laughs> who did you, how did you talk to Allison? I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> 
I don't even remember. I should see if because now what that's like what's I mean, there's so many cool things about doing comedy, but because I travel so much, people from my high school will come to shows. Right. Or from my past. And then I get to like catch up with people and I think that's really cool. It is. Like it not is everyone fun. gets an opportunity to do that. No. Yeah. Oh, you know what else is funny? There was one boy, we all loved him. He was Filipino, Nick, he was so hot. He was best friends with all of us and everyone was in love with him. And of course he's gay now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we couldn't none of us knew we all were trying Unattainable. to be his girl. Yeah. And we're all at his house, just his friends, and like he wasn't fucking anyone. No. And we did it didn't click at all. No, of course not. Cause you're just like, I want I'm in love with this person. He's so nice. Yeah. He's exactly. so sweet to us. He's so fun. He's so <laughs> funny. Yeah. Ugh. Um Okay, well, since we are in the high school guidance yes. counselor's office, this is your time where we get to rectify a wrongdoing of the past, where we get to release yourself of the burden that something in high school has been putting on your shoulders for this whole entire time. And once we talk about it, once we work it out in the high school guidance counselor's office, you'll never think about it again because that's how therapy works. Um, I, that's amazing. <laughs> Oh, God, I haven't seen my therapist in, like, two months. Fucking well. bitch. Um, <laughs> she had to go visit her grandkids. Um, let's see. What do I, I mean, that one friend that I kind of ended that friendship with, and then we rekindled, and then she, like, um, she died when we were 20 and 21. Oh, God. But I just wish I knew what gel, like, I wish I knew my emotions at the time. Yeah. I wish I knew, like, what about her bothered me because so much right. of it was like jealousy right and you just like can't figure it out it's like oh you're so annoying you're this and you're spoiled and you're that and it's like yeah we don't have the wherewithal to no. be like oh this is triggering something inside of me and yeah. it's not actually about the person it's about how the person is making me like internalize my own self and... yeah I think that's like the biggest thing was like I wish I was able to identify that and just enjoy her yeah yeah and like have that friendship yeah it's I mean when I think about that time I think that it's again like being a teen in the ages of like 14 to 18 is so hard because it's like you really do feel like a little mini adult and like you have your shit together but you also like genuinely have no idea as to what's going on internally and like what anything yeah. means and you're just filled with a bunch of feelings because you're like a raging hormonal teen you know yeah and it's nice to hear you say that because uh, sometimes I bl not blame my parents but because they don't really speak English they're so Soviet and we had culture clashes and like they're they didn't grow up in a way where like we talked because my therapist as an adult was like who did you talk to when things weren't good and I had no, I was like, oh, fuck, nobody. Yeah. No wonder I isolate when I don't, when, you know, when right. things aren't going my way. And it's, I, yeah, I just didn't have any parental guidance in any way in yeah. terms of this culture I was living in. Yeah. I mean, different because my parents weren't immigrants and especially like Soviet immigrants yeah but that's why but, like hearing that you all like that yeah. it's not because sometimes i just bl like blame or attribute things to like oh well we were just immigrants but then it's like oh you also weren't talking to your parents or like you know or yeah. you also felt all these different things i mean i think that being a teenager is so lonely i also think that again like in the culture what was going on what was happening in what you were in high school from 2001 to 2005. Yeah, 9 11 like, and the cafeteria. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it was, the culture was not what it is now. The culture no. was not like, um, express yourself and I don't know, like whatever it was. If you express yourself, you were emo. You were like a very specific kind of person, you know? And that is strapped with like a whole other thing of no, identity and all this stuff. like have you seen book smart yeah like there was no cool crew the cool crew was nice like yeah. it was all in her head and i was like this is more real i think yeah um there you know because it's like who was right who were writing those high school movies probably dorks and so it's like so much projection of what right. cool kids are and meanness right. and stuff like were people really doing swirlies i mean maybe i don't know but I, i've never seen a swirly seem, like 
it's not as divided and everyone it's more about like making people feel included but maybe i'm no i think whenever i talk to people on this show that have graduated in like 2013 it does feel like a drastic culture difference what did, what did the 2013 vibe feel like like grace cole and schmidt for example graduated high school in 2013 and she also went to an all-girls school which i do think is a very different dynamic than like having co-eds but they still intermingled with like a boys school it wasn't very like yeah there weren't like popular bullies there weren't it was much more like open people were less like embarrassed it was much more like express yourself like I don't know it seemed less I I don't know how to explain it I feel like whenever I talk to anyone that is our generation that I mean she's technically our generation but like our time in high school there's just so much trauma yeah yeah and there's like one girl that was so fucking mean to me and thinking back on her life, I'm like, oh, yeah, she lived in a one bedroom apartment. She had to, like, share this backside weird patio room with two brothers. Yeah. Her, you know, the, it, it, like her. Uh, yeah. Like all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, she was so mean to me and I do hate her. But also like, fuck. Yeah. She didn't really stand a shot to be. No. Nice. Did all your bad girl sluts work at IHOP? <laughs> A lot of them, a lot of them worked at like delis. Okay, delis. Yeah. Okay. Like deli, like sandwich girl. Like yeah. I'll make you a slutty sandwich. Yeah, a lot of the bad girls were at IHOP. And babysitters. A lot were like real deal babysitters. That seems like a good girl thing to do though. Yeah, but it can also be, you know, you can get that bad girl babysitter. I'll tell you, if I were the wife of like – if I was a uh, at that time and I saw that girl come and like babysit my kids in front of my husband, I'd be like, nope. <laughs> I'd be like, you yeah, gotta go. You to, but then you have to dump your husband because he's a pedophile. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not her fault. No, she's it's a his fault. Teen and he's no, a pedophile. I guess that's true. Hold on. Let me rewind. <laughs> Let me rewind. She can come in and babysit the kids, and I'll support her. Yeah. And I will look at her and I'll be like, anything you need, I'm here for you. I will be like Minka Kelly to. Um, Alexa Demi. Wait, are you a big Parenthood fan? No, <laughs> I'm talking about Euphoria. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm glad Minka <laughs> Kelly's working. Yeah, um, no, I haven't seen Minka Kelly since Parenthood. I can't wait to watch Euphoria. Alexa Demi nannies Minka Kelly's child. Amazing in Euphoria, and Minka Kelly and Alexa Demi have this like you know uh, kind of simpatico relationship with each other, where they're just like. She gets it. They're cool. They, like, try on fancy clothes and, like, drink wine together as if any parent would let me do that when I was babysitting their kid. But that's what I would do. I would be like, I'm here for you, and then I'd divorce my husband. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. You have to get a divorce. If you're not getting a divorce, what are you doing? A lot. You you blame your teen daughter, and then you kick her out of the house for being a slut. That that's was true. the '90s thing to do. That that really was. The '90s was like my daughter's a nasty slut. Not like why is she a nasty slut? Yeah, no questions. Yeah, absolutely. Our society's fucked. Well, at I'm the trying end to think of, this... of other things that I wish I learned, or is that the, that's the next thing? What I would have told myself, guidance yeah, counselor. But like, if, what I was going to say trauma. at the end of guidance counselor, I'm going to say. That you weren't alone in those feelings of wishing that you, like, were more upfront with your emotions and talked about things and could understand why you felt certain feelings. I feel like everyone felt that way to yeah. some degree. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully people have some reflection and know that. I do want to, like, because the people that were really hot and popular – it's harder to live a great adult life. Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, I think I actually think it's impossible. I don't know how. I think that if you really peaked in high school, I don't know how it gets any better. Because if you really peaked in high school and then you need to go and, like, live independently, I mean. And you didn't develop a personality. If everyone no. wanted to fuck you right away, it's harder to develop a personality. Yeah, I agree. But I want to know where everyone is because it seems like they just moved to the suburbs. I don't know. It's like. I bet you a lot of them got like married young. Yes, they did. And now are like probably living 
near your hometown and probably have like four kids. Yeah. And I, I know I was like shading someone that did that. My sister goes, <laughs> her husband were like, well, that's like a good choice too. And I go, you're right. Because <laughs> they married, they met sophomore year of high school. No. And they're in their 40s and have three kids and live where they grew up. And I was like, oh, yeah, my friend does that. <laughs> they looked at me. They're like, yeah, some other people do that, too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, I think it is like we are so in this, like, weird world, in this, like, weird pocket where it's, like, doing those things feels crazy to me yes. still. Like, even the fact that I'm married feels insane to me. Nevertheless, like, how did you guys meet? We met through our sisters. Oh, fun. Okay. And it's like, nevertheless, when I think about like having kids, and then I look at some people that I went to high school with, and they're having two kids, and I'm like, what? Yeah, or like you, someone, you find out someone's getting married or having kids, and you're like, oh my God, but you're so young. And then it's yeah. like, oh, I guess you're 28. That's yeah, normal. that's fine. I guess you that's, can do that. <laughs> I guess normal. that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for sharing with us in the guidance counselor's office. You get a Jolly cool. Rancher I, I'm as put part a few of sharing. In my purse. I'm you be you must. You must. Yeah. Please do. I'm going to take a cherry. I'm going to actually take one of you each. You should take one of each. Um, I got to know if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? Just to be. I was myself. People didn't like it. Um, I think. <laughs> Maybe to make more friends. I wish I worked harder. Not worked harder. I wish I was able to have figured out a way to be getting fucked more or dating or, mm. like, found people that, like, like I don't know, figured that out a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I wish that was. I would go back and be like, girl, get out there. Mm. Oh, maybe be like, you're not fat or something like that. Yeah. Like, you could just. Like, you're not fat. Get out there. Well, yeah, because what I always say, it's like, if you, um, <laughs> like, if you really, I, I think about this all the time. Like, if you've had self-worth in a certain way about body stuff, then it makes sense you're going to keep it up. You're going to be like, oh, I want to keep continue looking like this. But if you always think you're fat or gross, there's nothing to hold on to. And so then you keep just getting fatter, but you already have thought that forever. Right. And then all of a sudden you truly are like, wait, wait, what's just happened? And if it's like if you just liked yourself, you'd maintain more in a way i also think though that the opposite can happen like for me i remember i was at a point where i felt like oh the only thing valuable about me is the fact that i have like tits and i'm like can fuck people wow. so then it's like devalues it in an act like you know what i mean then it's just like oh all that i am is my body you know yeah and that was also a terrible feeling and you you felt that way yeah i mean for a while i was like because I was like the girl, I was like having, I was the girl fully having sex. I had sex for all of my friends. I was the girl having sex in high school, in my class. Like, the, none of the popular girls were having sex. And then they started to a little bit junior and senior year. But like, I remember being like, well, this is what makes me, this is my value. It wasn't like my personality. It wasn't my, you know. And were you wit. having fun? I don't know. I don't know. I think I was so in my head. I don't know if it was fun or not. I think I was so concerned. I just wanted people to like me. I just like really wanted people to like me. And I. Well, it's cool that they liked you for being slutty because it could turn the other way sometimes. Well, I think some of the girls didn't didn't like that I was slutty. And I think that that's why I wasn't fully allowed into some of the groups. Because I think that they ultimately thought I was a bad girl. Because I was a stoner, I smoked cigarettes, I drank, and I had sex. And they were like, mm. You know? Whoa. And did, did, you, did, you do, did you do the thick eyeliner of the yes. other girl you did? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of course. That's amazing. And I would just, like, come to school high and, like, smoke cigarettes in the alley. Going to high school stoned, I loved that's nothing cool. nothing more fun. Like, yeah, I'd get picked up with a few friends in the red Jeep. Yeah. And we'd park across the street and get stoned before school. Like, that is so fucking cool. I had a Mini Cooper. Wow. When, like, Mini Cooper first, like, relaunched, we got a Mini Cooper and we had a convertible. And I used to hotbox the fuck out of this little tiny car. And were your parents privy to your behavior? I'm sure, but they were so in their own shit that they just, like, didn't have time for me. Like, I would come, I mean, think about it this way. You can smell when someone has smoked a cigarette two hours ago. Like, I would be coming home, like, smoking cigarettes in the car. I'd come to the door and my dad would be like, 
were you smoking? And I'd be like, no, fuck off. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, of course I was smoking. I reek, I reek of an ashtray. Like, I don't know why I thought that I, that they wouldn't know. And then my parents also found, my mom found like an apple foil and like a knife and the apple was like carved like a pipe. You remember when you used to, yeah, of whatever. Of course I do. And my mom was like, were you smoking pot out of an apple? And I was like, no. I was like, everyone is attacking me. Like, stop thinking I'm bad. Like, you're attacking me. No. It's a snack in my side drawer. Like, can I not have food in my room? Like, and my mom was just like, ugh, you're annoying. Like, <laughs> you're annoying. Oh, my God. Oh, I didn't know. But you got good grades. No. Oh, my God. I was a terrible student. Maybe it's because of your loafers. I just assumed you were like getting no. good grades. Oh my god, no! And DC of it all, like you know, I was I was getting I was getting bad grades. I I went to a very competitive private high school where everyone was going to like fucking Stanford and Yale and Harvard and shit. But no, I got really bad grades, and my mom saw early on that like she knew that was not going to be my path. She was like academia my brother and sister are super super smart that was their thing she just like knew it wasn't going to be my thing so she never like put the amount of pressure on me that my dad would put on me like my dad would be so colossally disappointed in me all the time and then they used to send home like alerts like in the mail that I would get something like lower than I guess like a C and my I lived in an apartment building and the doorman in my apartment building knew to like intercept the mail for me for our unit and I would just like hide all of the alerts. How'd you get in with the door guy like that? <sighs> because he loved me because I was charming. You I know. I love that. Yeah. The yeah. door guy helped you. He helped me. I mean, so many weekly I was getting those. And then the principal of my high school, who was my advisor, who loved me, who still like comments on my Instagram, he'll be like I'll be like, glad to see you're using that diploma, like, on some video where I'm like, Emma can't be stinking like a fish, and he's, like, <laughs> watching this. But is your choir people proud of you? Yeah, I mean, two, two that I'm still in touch with, yes. It's, it was just weird. High school's just a weird time. Yeah, I loved learning this. I loved that you were out there getting high. I mean, you're not really. Do you smoke weed now? I can't. I can't. I get so paranoid now. In high school, I loved it. I was like, it was like my, it was freedom. It was it was pure pure freedom. It was pure freedom. <laughs> I loved getting stoned in mm-hmm. Skokie. Um, did I'm grateful for that time? Did you go to prom? I didn't because a lot of my dances were like such bad experiences in that senior homecoming. The guy wouldn't even go with me, but Fucked. went with me. And so let's I say think, a fuck you to that guy. Yeah, Julian. Fuck you, Julian. Um, he tried to friend me on Facebook. I remember like no. years and years ago when I went. No, you blocked. <laughs> yeah, you no. Did not get into this. No. But I think I got to go on a trip with my parents, or we went to the lake. Like we did something, and I pretended like I was too busy to go to prom. Okay. Um, I love being too busy to go to prom. Yeah, that is power. Because I was I. I didn't have any way out of it. And then, like, junior high, when people do go to the dances, I was going to the movie theater with my parents every Friday. So I never went to any dances. That's we so were at the movies. sweet. Um, but we had a turnabout dance in my sophomore year. And What's I said, I have to find it's like when the girls ask the guys, okay. but I just went with a few girlfriends. But the, all the photos, you could tell I was just hysterically crying because nothing looked good. I had nothing to wear and I don't no. know what to do and everyone hates me. And, like, my friends had to just wait in the living room as I was having a full mental breakdown. And then all the photos, I'm, like, freshly, freshly dried tears in, like, a halter top with Asian lettering on it oh. and black pants. Oh. <laughs> Lisa, little Lisa. I want to find. Um, I really want to find these crying dance photos. You have to crying. find them. We need them. We need yeah. them for the pod. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I'm happy for my time. And yeah. In general, I loved my theater teacher. Whatever. I mean, look, it's good that you loved your theater teacher. Most people hated their theater teacher, myself included. Because they hated me. Yeah, because you were too talented. <laughs> That's um. God, it's been such a I, – I, I could truly talk to you for eternity. I really could talk to you for eternity. Um, 
But Sally, I need to ask you the last question on the pod. Okay, yes. What was your senior superlative? And if you didn't have a senior superlative, what was your senior quote? I loved my senior quote, and it's from my friend Veronica, and it's, if comedic value outweighs personal loss, it's a worthwhile situation. I really feel like you like foretold your <laughs> yeah. your future with that. Yeah, I can't believe Veronica just used to say that. I don't even know how she came up with it. I mean, she's like a smart, cool person, and um, we're still friends, and I still resonate with that quote and believe in it and I'm so happy that it was mine I mean wow yeah but my photo sucked because I had to dye my hair black for the kabuki play and then my mom tried to lift it and then so I had like truly like brown cheetah spots within the black hair and I remember some I overheard someone talking shit about it and I had to be like it's clearly not what I wanted like I don't know why you're talking about it like I don't know that this is a disaster like fuck off (laughs) Fuck. Wow. Honestly. Oh, you know what else? Did you ever choke each other out in high school? That's what we did a lot of. <laughs> what? Like ch- to get hot, like you would choke each other out on the wall until someone passes out and then they come to. <laughs> and we would videotape ourselves choking each other out. <laughs> Teenagers are fucking dumb. Fucking dumb. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. And even longer. Like the amount of times I was just like helmetless on the back of motorcycles. It's like, I can you imagine how sad your parents could be if that's the way you go? Awful. Just not wearing a helmet on Lakeshore Drive, but whatever. Oh my god. We're alive. We're smart. We're and alive. Better. We're smart. We're finally getting good tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that's kabuki plays anymore. No, no kabuki, but I was proud. Wow, Lisa. Thank you for having a, me. A blessing every time. <laughs> It never ceases to be the best. Um, where can all of my little classmates listen to you and find you? Classmates at Glitter Cheese on the internet. And then um, I have a podcast at HeadGum called Enemies. Which we love. So check it out. Absolutely. Wow, what another absolutely mind-blowing episode of Senior Superlatives. Aren't we so lucky that we just give this gorgeous material for free? One might say it's a it's crazy. It's a free service, I think, which is why you should give me five stars and you should give me good reviews. And, um, you know, positivity. We promote positivity on the pod. And as I say every week, stay cool, never change. Until next time, ciao.